I'm here with Munir, my friend from Abu Dhabi. You're an expert in persuasion and influence. That's You're a best-selling author in that's right. eight, I have a, eight countries. That, that's right, on uh, Amazon, best-selling author in eight countries. Mm -hmm. uh, my book, Power Persuasion. So I'm going to be speaking to Jesper, uh, who is an NLP trainer. He works with professionals in the Netherlands. And we're just going to be having a chat uh, about you know, using NLP. NLP can be used a lot in persuasion and uh, influence. And, you know, a lot of people think of it as, uh, oh, dodgy salesperson, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, you know, can use car salesman. But, but yeah. persuasion is, is used in, in all forms of yeah. life, whether yeah. you're trying to get a person to get you a coffee uh, to, um, you know, asking for a raise mm -hmm. or even in the household with your wife, etc. Yeah. But we're focusing on business yeah. and how we can use uh, the NLP and the persuasion parts yeah. of NLP. Uh, in the workplace and how and you can... I, I think it's, by the way, beautiful what you said about how small it can be. Mm -hmm. And for instance, we're here at the hotel, we're both doing a course here right now. Yeah. And uh, during lunch yesterday, like I, g I got a sandwich at this sandwich place, and it can be as small as just being polite to the lady making your sandwich, yeah. because she might just put some extra shrimp or whatever <laughs> you like on your sandwich, because she likes you. <laughs> uh, and that is already persuasion um, uh, to, to you know get stuff done, because you will it. So when you yeah. specifically want something to happen that you know how to do it and that's the question I always like to ask someone is is do you know how to get something done in your company like do you know mm -hmm. when you get a project how to get people on board uh, do you know how to ask something of your boss to get it done or of your clients uh, mm -hmm. for that matter and I think yeah. that's an important question and uh, you know you, you raise a, a really awesome uh, example of here by mm -hmm. the way we are in a very delightful Dublin uh, forgot to in mention. A, in a hotel here. We're, we're in as a hotel. Can, as you can <laughs> see around us. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, we're, yeah, we, it, it's raining. I can't take the camera outside. But it's still delightful. So, you know. Delightful Dublin. <laughs> so, we're in the delightful Dublin. And uh, actually, it's, it's funny. You mentioned about yeah. the restaurant. Just, uh, we have a, a, a shop just next door. Mm -hmm. And I used very, very simple um, rapport building tactics. And we, we're going to talk about a couple of uh, yeah, rapport building let's tactics. Do. But uh, I used very simple rapport building tactics just every time I went in, you know, yeah. eye contact, smile, a uh, little bit of body mirroring, which we'll, we'll talk about. Yeah. And uh, then the, the next time I went in, the guy just said, oh, listen, don't go to that line. You come here. Right. And I skipped, I skipped a cue. I mean, it's, it's a small thing, mm -hmm. but it was a small interaction. I got a result. Yeah. And you yeah. can imagine amplifying that if yeah. you do it uh, in the workplace with your right. colleagues or with c uh, clients uh, on a daily basis, mm -hmm. the, the number of results that you exactly. can get. And that's beautiful which is because it's, it's, it's not about skipping line once. I mean, it's, <laughs> that's the start, right? Yeah. As, as Munir says, I mean, it's, okay, interesting. So you can get into a better line if, you, if you're nice to people. <gasps> what a revelation. Ah! <laughs> but exactly what you say, if you yeah. do it often enough, if you do it with clients, if you do it with your boss, this is one thing that I teach mm -hmm. when I get into to companies um, is is this difference between someone that's a problem maker within a company yeah. and someone that's a problem solver mm. and there's so many people and this is good to analyze yourself with this like am I actually solving more problems at my workplace or am I making them and then when you get be to honest. The <laughs> be honest be honest no yeah <laughs> and if you get to the nitty gritty of it it's like when your boss comes to you with something right he has a problem yeah. or yeah. she has a problem and she comes to you with okay this needs to be fixed are you the type of person that goes okay I'll fix that um, and then five minutes later you send her an email like uh, do you want mm -hmm. it like this or do you want and that email is yeah. another problem created it's a small one but and then you yeah. go to your colleague like what do you think of this that's another problem and it's not bad to make mm. to, you know to ask of opinions but if you do it consistently and you're only making problems all the time is that helping out in the in the long run whereas there are some people and those are the people that are actually modeled their behavior and started teaching it to other people and i'm not a behavior <laughs> those, model those type of people <laughs> <laughs> but actually when you get a problem or when you, you your boss comes to you and she gives you a problem where you'd go consider it done that's okay. Done I'll deal. fix it. Exactly. And you want to watch a video? Done deal. See? See what I did? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so that's the behavior that you can start to get into and just learn about persuasion, which you can learn from Munir and, and at a lot of different places too, obviously. Um, just start to learn those things. But I think it's good to get into maybe a bit of the report. Let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about a couple of uh, sure. usable techniques that people were, can use starting today in the workplace. Sure. What I was thinking, why don't we start off with a bit of rapport. There are many techniques to create subconscious rapport. But yeah. 
I think the first starting place, even though there are techniques to create subconscious rapport, is mm -hmm. with intent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th that, that to me is really powerful yeah. because, yes... And we just take it that you know what rapport is. So if you don't know it, Google it very quickly. Uh, and we'll wait, and we'll wait. Yeah. Okay, done. <laughs> uh, if not, pause. But anyhow, um, yeah. So, so with with uh, with the rapport creation, there are many techniques that you can create subconscious rapport. But really, overlying any of that is an intent yeah. to connect with someone, mm -hmm. and that intent is is more powerful than subconscious. Because if you uh, and you'll see what I, we mean in a minute, because. We can create subconscious rapport where the subconscious mind thinks, hey, I'm connected to the person. Yeah. But if uh, you are consciously kind of yeah. doing it in a way that wants to... Um, it's, I, think, I think a good example would be, I don't know if you have it where, where you live, but in, in most big cities you have uh, these salespeople on the street, right? Yeah. And, and uh, you probably notice because they are usually not that well trained at making rapport. Um, and usually when you walk up to them and you see them, you immediately, immediately feel this kind of, uh, I don't, I don't want to connect with them, right? Yeah. That, that type of feeling. Whereas there are sometimes Sometimes people maybe at your job or just in general in a cafe or wherever you are, you meet someone and you go like, wow, we have a real good relationship going on here. This is yeah. something really special. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes you get, get it with someone that just walks into a room yeah. and they you instantly have, have that with them. charm, charisma, yeah. and you don't know what it is, but it's something about them that you feel connected to instantly. Yeah. And that is subconscious report. That, that, yeah. uh, that, that feeling of connection despite what when people don't say anything but when a person's trying to scam you they're they're incongruent with their actions and um, and what they're saying yeah. and what they're communicating subconsciously yeah. and we actually within professional NLP we've been breaking that down like how does that happen how do you feel you've got a good relationship here how is yeah. that possible when does that happen um, and it's it's very simple and I guess what most people will know maybe even the people watching is the principle of mirroring which I actually think is a bit faulty yeah. uh, because it's like if you know it it's it's really simple it's like if I want to make report rapport with Munir here, I have to sit exactly like Munir and, and when Munir moves his arm for instance, like I should also move oh. my arm and it's like, <laughs> like wow, now we really like each other. Yeah. And because yeah. because we, it, it seems like we're in, it, we're, we're we'll get to the next in step sync. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like that's the basics of rapport, like the more you look alike, the more you act and speak alike, the more rapport you should have. Yeah. But there's a big problem that you maybe have already spotted, which uh, becomes really apparent if I were to do this with you, where you're now, um, which I obviously can because you're watching this through a video. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that it can get <laughs> annoying. It can get annoying. He's, he's, he's sitting out. there trying to save this video or talk and I'm mm -hmm. do I'm I'm getting annoying to him. Exactly. Oh, sorry. And you sorry. <laughs> that's okay, Muni. It was demonstration purposes. That's fine. You know I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> but but you can imagine how annoying it would be if someone with you would be like really forcing this rapport thing mm. and, and trying when you say like, oh, I like uh, watching Star Wars movies, they go like, oh yeah, me too. And then doing the same movements, that becomes silly. So mm. what I usually train people and what we've both been taught by Richard Bandler, for instance, that yep. we both did training with, is doing it on a much more subtle level. And the easiest way to teach you that would be um, to find the rhythm of a person and I know it sounds a bit fluffy but it's the easiest way to learn this quickly without going to into a three-hour training session yeah. is to find out the rhythm of a person because we, we, we are we're, we're, you know while we've been talking we've been talking in a somewhat similar rhythm right. and uh, indicating that we're in somewhat of uh, a bit of rapport right. and you see even even to an extent even though I'm not mirroring his exact uh, body movements yeah. when I'm talking and then when he's talking, he, we are doing similar body yeah. movements, just at very different times. And your unconscious picks this up. So your unconscious picks up that those things are aligned. Uh, and the other persons will too. When you speak with them um, and you kind of take, if they're really fast speaking, mm. for instance, and fast moving, and you also kind of move towards that rhythm and maybe speed up a little. And if someone's really slow, you slow down a little bit as well, yeah. they'll start to feel rapport towards yeah. you. So that's, I think, the biggest thing about rapport and just start to do it, really. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it, I think you raise a very good point in terms of the speed, because mm -hmm. if a person is speaking very quickly and you are speaking. 
<laughs> slow. Yeah, then then you could be completely out yeah. of sync, and and you just do not connect with the person. That's it. But the more levels that you can connect with, and you can get very advanced. I mean, you mm. can start to match like breathing patterns and a whole bunch of things. But the more subconsciously and not at a conscious level, where yeah. uh, oh it your hand moves forced. up and your ha yeah. the hand moves up, you know, forget yeah. that. Do it at a much more subconscious yeah. level. And you may already start to notice after watching this movie that in the conversations you might have today or tomorrow or in the coming week, that you start to notice that within these conversations you have, you go like, oh gosh, I'm having the same body posture as this other person, yeah. which is a good sign, by the way. It means you've got rapport and yeah. that's great. So that's, and that's a good sign. And, that, and that's something to notice. Find conversations where you already feel connected to a person yeah. and start to notice what do you have in similar with those people right. and then start to notice those conversations that go completely the opposite way and then see what is different in that conversation right. and actually just starting to notice what happens naturally is really the secret to breaking it down and being able to apply it in different places in your life so just i would say just practice this start with it start exercising and just start noticing the rapport rapport is all around you uh, in every conversation you've got Cool. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you I soon. should say that. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I know, I know. I just, but I just, I, I, this I one, have a habit. I this have one a habit. wasn't your video. <laughs> We made, happen, we made two, happen. so we made two videos. So this is the one, and there's another one. Are we so going to use bloopers? We should totally use bloopers. <laughs> we should totally use bloopers. <laughs> so just click, click on the other video. So just all over. Just do it. <laughs>